Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to TVR Clinic! You guys know if you watched last month that I am pre-filming this so that I don't have to take this away with me whilst I'm away from home. So it's March, it's not for me, it's still like mid-January for me, but <laughs> it's March or coming up to March for you. It's time to find out what my March TBR is going to be. Again, I've got a lot of really fun videos coming in March that I'm very excited for. So let's just find out what we're gonna be reading together. If you don't know, TBR Cluedo is my TBR game. It's named TBR Cluedo, not Clue because we call it Cluedo here in the UK. If you didn't, it wasn't something to be liked. It was something to be understood from an academic perspective. Well, they... Obviously, you're not an academic. No. By the time I had named it, I um, like put the name on it on the board. I found out afterwards that you call it Clue. Like, if you're an American, do you call it in, ca in Canada? Do you call it Clue or Cluedo? Anyways. <laughs> Let's get into March's TBR. Okay, it's time for March's TBR Cluedo. Are we all excited? I am. <laughs> okay, roll number one. Person number five over here in non-fiction. Let's see how many we roll. We've got a three and a one. What can we get to in that room with a three or a one? <laughs> Let's go one, two, three, four. That is number 22, which is a book rated three point something on Goodreads. Okay, roll number one is a non-fiction that is rated three point something on Goodreads. And I have gone with Murder Isn't Easy, The Forensics of Agatha Christie by Carla Valentine. This was in my 24 books I wanna read in 2024 video. It's going into The Forensics of Agatha Christie, basically. She was super advanced. She came up with the term scene of the crime. Her knowledge of poisons was super advanced. Her knowledge and, and understanding understanding of things like fingerprints were super advanced and this book basically goes into that and in that video I said I was nervous about spoilers on this but I since went and read loads of reviews and they all say there's absolutely no spoilers for like resolutions on how things you know who murdered who in Agatha Christie books which is good because I feel like some things some non-fictions when they do talk about Agatha Christie are just like they just spoil without warning give me a warning I don't want to be spoiled without warning I know these books are like however many years old like some of them are like almost 100 years old but like I don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> Do you want spoilers? So yeah, I am trying to read more non-fiction this year as well, as you guys know. Oh, I'm so excited for this one. There's pictures throughout it. I think this is going to be fascinating. This is really like a great intersection of my interests and what I'm interested in. So I can't wait. This has been on my TBR for quite some time now. And I'm just so happy and excited to be finally getting around to it. So... <laughs> This is like one of the non fictions on my TBI I've wanted to read the most. And now that I know that there is no spoilers, I'm so ready. I'm so ready and I'm so excited. I think this author is like a forensic expert as well. So it's really coming from a place of expertise. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, roll number two. Person number six, which is yellow over here in Thriller. Let's see how many we roll. We got five and a six. Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is number 24, and that is a book I've never seen on Goodreads. Role number two was a thriller that I have never seen on Booktube, and I am going with When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. I cannot, to my knowledge, remember anyone ever speaking about this. This is about a woman who is a missing persons detective. She goes to this, I think she has a family tragedy, and she goes to this like small town to grieve, but there is a local girl who has gone missing, and it reminds her of stuff that happened in her childhood when there was an unsolved murder case, and that's basically it. I I don't know what anyone thinks about this. How many ratings does this have? I feel like it can't have many on Goodreads, right? It has 54,000 ratings. Who's read this? <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. I have not heard anyone speak about this. Have any of my friends read it? Any other booktubers that I know read it? Who is reading this and why? <laughs> I got sent an arc of it, so that's why I have it, but I did not know. Everyone else is out here reading it. Okay, that's interesting. It had a fairly high average rating. It had a 3.85. So this is one of the older books on my TBR that I just want to refresh. I want to get all those old books off my TBR, have it all be new, fresh books. We're trying to get my TBR down as well this year, guys. <laughs> Don't know if you know that. But yeah, I'm really excited for this one. I think it could be very atmospheric. You know, there's a lot of trees and, and, and what's the word? Smog, fog. It's not smog, isn't smog like dirty? So yeah, I think this could be a good one. I'm excited to pick it up. Roll number three, person number seven, which is brown up here in mystery. Let's see how many we roll. Got a one or a five. 
Okie doke. Oh, can we get to the glasses with that? The glasses is a wild prompt, but I'm kind of down for it. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my God, we can. Okay, that's the glasses, which means I have to scroll on Instagram until I see a book I own and then I have to read it. Roll number three is the glasses weapon, which is absolutely psychotic. <laughs> and it involves me scrolling on Instagram until I see a book that I own and I have to read it. So let me open Instagram and screen record. I'm gonna be honest with you, it might take us a while because I follow a lot of book accounts, but I don't think that's the content Instagram really recommends to me. I don't look at a lot of bookstagram content, I'm gonna be honest. Like I do on stories, but I also, I never scroll on Instagram. I always just look at stories. So, oh, we've got Kylie Jenner <laughs> up front. Skincare, see, see what I mean? So that's an ad for Ruth Ware's new novel, but that's not out yet. Bright Young Women, I have read. See, there's a lot of like house content, food content. <laughs> come, okay, come spend a day in publishing with me. Anything there? No, there was no book there that I owned, that I recognized. Is there gonna be any other books? We shall see, let me turn this down. No, don't own that. Wayward, get out of here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I don't think there is going to be a book here. Nope, don't own that. I don't think there's going to be one I know. Oh, 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 oh. In the background there. In the background, in the background. So I decided to go and investigate it. <gasps> is there anything else that I can choose from? <laughs> no, okay. It looks like in the background there, can you see on that board? The only one I own there is How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackie. I guess we're reading that. We're reading How to Kill Your Family. Okay, wait. Where is that? <laughs> I have no idea where that book is. Is it on my cart? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I found it. So this is How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackie. This is the kind of book that I got because it was really cheap in Tesco's. Oh no, 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 no shame. Whenever I go to a supermarket, I don't go very often, we do our food shop online. So whenever I go into a supermarket, I always gotta have a little look at the book selections. And this is one that's always in there and really cheap. And it's one that has been super popular here in the UK. They say you can't choose your family, but you can kill them. Meet Grace Bernard, daughter, sister, serial killer. Grace has lost everything and she will stop at nothing to get revenge. Okay. I'm a bit nervous. I don't know if this is gonna be 100% my thing, but I have heard great things about it. But I worry, is it a bit more like, is it marketing itself as a thriller mystery, but really it's like contemporary fiction about women here in the UK? Cause that, that's a thing that happens. <laughs> I don't know, we shall see, but we're gonna be reading it this month. Thanks to the glasses. I don't think that was a good choice, glasses. I think we should have had a better one. Not that I don't think I'm gonna enjoy it. A lot of you have told me I'm gonna enjoy it, but like, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> Roll number four. Person number one over in fantasy. Oh, can we get the rose prompt? I'd love to get the rose prompt as well. Ah, I gotta roll that one again. I don't know what it landed on. Two and a one. Oh my God, you're kidding me. One, two, three. We can do it. Oh my God, we got the rose prompt. That's so fun. We got two of the weapons. And then roll number four was the rose prompt. So when I land on the rose prompt, everyone who joins my patron gets to pick two books off my physical TBR that they would like me to read. And it gets put into this jar. Let me get to the jar. Here is the jar. <laughs> so yeah, this is all the books that my patrons have picked for me and we pick one out and we read it. So let's see what it is. I'm going in with no hesitation. I'm just grabbing one. I always hesitate. I'm trying to get better at that. Okay, focus on my hand, please. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, okay. What's it gonna be? Stop it. We're reading A Curious Beginning. We're reading the first Veronica Speedwell. I think that's wrapped up, isn't it? Is that wrapped up? Yes, okay, I need to go find that. I'm gonna stop this recording and I'm gonna go find it because basically all of the books that are wrapped up, when we wrap them up, we write a tiny number on them that you can't see very easily. But if I need to find a book that is wrapped up, I can go through the books and look for the numbers and find them. So bear with. <laughs> okay, here it is. I cannot believe I've been forced into it after all this time. <laughs> Let's find out who picked this. Oh, we've got a lot of people. So, Rosie picked it, Kayla picked it, Lucy picked it, Alyssa picked it, Brittany picked it, and Mara picked it. 
That's it. Those are people who have picked this for me. I cannot believe I've been forced into reading it after all this time. You guys have been telling me for so long to pick up the Veronica Speedwell series and that I'm gonna love it so much. I think I know I am. I know I'm gonna love it. <laughs> no, I'm gonna love it. But I've just been scared off for some reason. I think it's because it's such a long series, right? It's like 10 books or something. And even though I read some series like that, I just don't want to opt into more because I know I'm not gonna get caught up in it by the end of the year. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're following Veronica Speedwell and the guy that she, Stoker, yeah, and they're solving mysteries and it's like Victorian times and it's so much fun and everyone tells me I'm gonna love it. Everyone tells me I should read it. Everyone is like, Megan, have you read it yet? You know, and everyone who I know has read it loved it. Oh my God, I can't believe this has happened. <laughs> I believe this is the start of me now and nothing's gonna change it. I can't believe this has happened. Okay, we're gonna be reading A Curious Beginning this month. Wow, that's, that's a moment. That's a moment in history, my goodness. <laughs> Roll number five, person number three, which is red up here in historical. Let's see, oh my God, these are going crazy today. We've got five and a one. Let's just go one <laughs> and get number 21. And that is a TBR veteran. Roll number five was a historical that is a TBR veteran. And I am going to be reading Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am so excited to read Pride and Prejudice. I feel like today the future starts. So it's a good day. I'm excited. <laughs> I've spoken to you guys a lot about this recently, or at least it feels like I have. And like in my present day, maybe not for you. <laughs> but I love Pride and Prejudice. I grew up watching the BBC adaptation. I love it so much. I could probably like quote a lot of that adaptation to you. Like I, so much of it is stored in my brain. I know it so intimately. <laughs> And I read Emma by Jane Austen last year and it made it into my top 10 books of the year. I absolutely loved Emma. And so I'm so excited to read Pride and Prejudice, finally. Well, I, I read it when I was younger. Me and my mum read it together when I was younger, but I'm gonna be reading it as an adult, finally. It's been probably like 10, 15 years <laughs> since I've read it. So it's been a while and I just think I'm gonna love it. I think it's gonna be five stars. I'm getting into my classics era. I'm suddenly reading all these classics. Who is she? You can't stop me. I'm out here reading classic upon classic upon classic. I'm unstoppable. We're having a lot of fun. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna read Pride and Prejudice. We're gonna, oh, Lizzie and Mr. Darcy. I just think it's so, Jane Austen is such an interesting author because I feel like the stuff that she writes, when you boil it down to its core, is still so relevant to all of us today. You know what I mean? She just gets it. She gets it. Well, I, Emma, I feel like could have been a modern novel. You know what I mean? So I cannot wait. I cannot wait to read it. And I just something about the story of Pride and Prejudice. I think it's why I love Grump Sunshine. Like when I read romances now, my favorite duo is Grump Sunshine. Like that's what I tend to give five stars in romances because they are the blueprint, you know? <laughs> okay, final roll. Person number four, which is pink over here in horror. Let's see how many we roll. We've got one and a one. Oh my gosh, okay, so we've got to go one, two. That is number nine, which is a book recommended by Goodreads. Okay, so I'm gonna have to find like a horror, horror list <laughs> and find out what books are on it. And then my final roll was a horror that has been recommended by Goodreads and this is the one I'm giving to my patrons to vote on. They vote on one round of TV I'll it every month and that is also our book club pick. And I don't know what this is yet because I haven't done the poll yet. I'm gonna do the poll close to the time. So let's switch to future Megan telling you what books I put on the poll and what won. Okay, hello, it is future Megan here in Wales and the category was a horror that has been recommended by Goodreads. So what I decided to do for this poll because this is the one, I think, I can't even remember what I've told you. It's been so long since I found this TBR. What I decided to do was for the four options I give them to vote between for the poll, I would do all books that were nominated in the horror category for the Goodreads Choice Awards in the most recent year. Cause I thought that would be a really fun way to pick, pick our option. I remember feeling like the horror category had some really strong options last year. And that if I was gonna have read any other category other than mystery thriller, I would have liked to have read horror cause I was excited by a lot of the options. So I picked four options that were nominated and they were Silver Nitrate by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang, and Rouge by Mona Award. Now, I really thought that How to Sell a Haunted House or Rouge would win because I thought they were the two biggest names on that list. But the winner, quite substantially, 
was Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. I am so excited to read this with everyone. I think this is gonna be a really good book club pick. I think we're gonna have really good discussions from it. I can't wait. Everyone also agreed that this was a great selection. This is like one of the best polls. Like this is really hard to choose. I don't know what I would have voted for. Generally, I don't usually vote in the book club polls, but because I don't want to sway anyone. Yeah, I am really, really excited to read this. So from my, I actually haven't read the synopsis, but from my brief understanding of what this book is about, we're following this galley who I think, yeah, used to work at like some musical, um, conservatory and and she decides to abandon her music career and go into high-end beauty this like beauty lab like botox <laughs> place and she becomes obsessed i think with the niece of the owner and it's all about it's basically a horror about beauty and the beauty industry and skincare and makeup and botox and procedures and all these things and as someone i could i consume quite a lot of beauty content online be that makeup skincare i think it's quite interesting to make a horror based on that i am really excited to see the route that this goes down i also own rouge by Marin award which i know these two are on quite a similar topic but um i'm really excited to see how this book does it because i remember hearing people who have read both i think a lot of people prefer the kind of narrative route and angle that this one goes down. So I can't wait. I think I'm really gonna enjoy this. I'm excited to read this with everyone. I really love any book that kind of takes something that's like very prevalent in our modern culture, but it feels like almost no one is writing about it. Like other than Rouge, I can't really think of many other books that are about the beauty industry in this way and really tapping, if they are about the beauty industry, I find that often a bit like outdated. <laughs> Whereas this seems like it's really gonna tap into the modern cycle and modern nature of the industry. I'm really excited. So if you wanna read this with us um, on the Patreon, I'll leave the link down below if you join the Patreon. There has been so much exciting stuff happening on the Patreon lately. I've overhauled the Discord. We're doing games nights, everyone, like. It's growing an amazing community over there at the moment. So if you're interested, I would really recommend going and checking it out down below. But there will be discussion groups on the Discord for this where people share their thoughts and kind of chat with each other about their thoughts. Then there's a discussion live show that I host. And then there's also a reading vlog where I will exclusively post reading vlog on the Patreon, um, as well as so many other stuff that aren't related to the book club. So I'll leave that down below. But if you've ever been interested in the Patreon, I really think that this is the time to do it because I feel like the community there is amazing. I feel like I'm here in my stride with a lot of content I'm posting over there and I've been speaking to some people who have been like intimidated by joining Patreon in the past but I feel like everyone everyone who I've spoken to who's joined has really enjoyed it. So I'll leave the link down below. You can support for a month as as little as it costs to buy coffee. My cheapest tier is three pound a month. The book club tier is seven pound fifty a month and then we have a higher tier as well. But um yes. Okay, I'm really excited for this, everyone. I think this is gonna have great discussions for the book club. So we have it, everyone. That is my March TBR. I feel like that's a pretty good one. Let me get the books, actually. Oh my goodness, I am so excited for so many of these. I think this is gonna be a great reading month. Please let me know what you thought of any of these. If you're one of the, like, 55,000 that have read When the Stars Go Dark, <laughs> realize anyone has read it like we know um no let me know what you thought of any of these i'm i can't believe i'm reading a curious beginning i can't get over it i feel like i haven't processed it yet <laughs> i'm very excited so yeah let me know what you thought of any of these books and i will see you very soon in another video bye